Imagine you're 60 years old with a little more than $2 million in your portfolio. You're probably starting to wonder when can you retire and how much can you spend once you do? That's a situation today's couple finds themselves in. They've been so focused on building their portfolio, making sure they're saving, they haven't really gotten around to putting a plan in place to understand when can they retire and what might life be able to look like when they do. In today's video, we're gonna jump into Tommy and Monica's financial situation to show them what they're able to do, what they're tracking for, so they could start to put that plan in place. So this is Tommy and Monica. Tommy is a high school English teacher and Monica is an attorney and you can see the breakdown of their assets right here. Tommy's been saving to his 403B plan at work. It's a private school, so he does not have a pension, but he does have a 403B that he's contributing to. They have a joint investment account here. They have their primary home and their mortgage. And then they have Monica's IRA and Roth IRA here. Monica recently switched jobs, so her 401k rolled over to this IRA and she's now contributing to her new company's 401k. Now, when we go to their goals next, their goal was to retire at 70, but I could very quickly tell that wasn't actually their goal. They just knew that they had always prioritized saving and investing, and they never really got around to thinking about when do we actually want to retire and what do we want to do when that time comes? They knew that at age 70, they maximized their social security benefit. So in their heads, they just thought that they would continue working until 70. So that's what we're starting with, but in conversations with them, they did express that they'd have the desire to retire earlier if they could. And part of this work was to help them understand what might that point in time be when they could retire. So we're starting at age seven in this projection with the goal of helping them to understand when could that age actually be. We went through an exercise to see if they retired based upon what they wanna to spend today and how things might change in the future, what would they want to live on? So their expenses in today's dollars are about $6,500 per month, and that would allow them to live comfortably on a monthly basis. But in addition to that, they wanted to make sure that they had money left over to travel. We talked about the types of trips they would want to do, and they thought that $20,000 per year would be sufficient to allow them the budget to take the trips they wanted to have and really enjoy that time together. Now, one of the things that I pointed out to them after a conversation about the type of travel that they wanted to do was that some of that travel might be quite difficult if they truly did wait until age 70 to take those trips. They could probably take them for a year, maybe two, maybe three, but by mid seventies, their energy and their health probably isn't at the place where they could sustain the energy to take these trips and fully enjoy them. So that was actually another driving factor to say, can we actually take this retirement age of 70 and drive it down so we could actually enjoy more of this travel that we're planning on. Now, beyond that, there was health insurance costs. We estimated that if they did retire before age 65, which they didn't think they would, but if they did, it would cost about $800 per month for each of them for Medicare. So $9,600 per year. And then once Medicare started, in addition to Medicare Part B and Part D premiums, we're budgeting an additional $4,000 per year of out-of-pocket costs. So those are the health insurance costs and then home improvement. So they currently live in an older home. Then we had the discussion of do they see themselves continuing to stay in that home throughout retirement or moving? And they absolutely want to stay. Despite it being old and requiring a lot of upkeep, they love the home. They love the area. They love their friends around there and they didn't want to leave. That being said, we certainly had to plan for ongoing repairs and maintenance to the home because it was older and there were things that they knew they'd have to replace. So instead of trying to itemize every single thing, we said, let's add an additional $15,000 per year to your retirement budget to make sure that you can repair the home as things come up. And then finally, new vehicles. They said for the next number of years, every five years, we want to make sure we have $30,000 available to purchase a new car. Now, really the new vehicle would probably cost a bit more than 30,000, but they could sell their existing vehicles, get five to 15,000, depending on the vehicle, add that to 30,000, and that gives them what they need for that new car purchase. So this was us itemizing what would retirement need to look like for them in order to be on track to cover those needs. The next thing we looked at was their income. So Tommy's a high school English teacher, as I mentioned, his income is about $82,000 per year. Monica, as an attorney, has an income of about $215,000 per year. Tommy does not have a pension. A lot of teachers, if it's a state or public school, they're gonna get some type of a pension. And oftentimes that's a non-covered pension, meaning it reduces their social security benefit. Tommy's at a private school, so that's not the case for him. So he does pay into social security. He also does not have a pension, but his social security benefit at his full retirement age of 67 would be $2,400 per month, but he's gonna retire at age 70, so he would get three years of delayed retirement credits. Monica, she will also collect at 70, and her benefit at age 67 is 3,600 per month, she will also get three years of delayed retirement credits. And then finally, Tommy's saving 15% to his 403B. Monica is maxing out her 401k plan. They're receiving a little bit of a match. What we wanna do though, is I told them even ahead of this, 
you're going to be on track for retirement if you retire at 70. But let's see how on track. And in fact, let's see how overfunded are you projected to be so we can start working backwards to say, when is that actual ideal retirement time? So you can start taking this trip, start doing more of what you want instead of waiting until 70 to allow all of this to happen. So we always like to start by taking a look at their retirement cash flows, not just their retirement cash flows, but really their cash flows starting today, extending throughout their retirement. So what do I mean by that? Well, to start, what income sources do you have today and what income sources will you have in the future? Today, they both have their salary. And you can see that if we assume an inflation rate of 3% on those salaries, here's what their total income is projected to be over the next number of years. Now that's helpful to know for the next several years, but then that salary goes away. What happens when that salary goes away? Well, social security kicks in for the both of them. And you can see what those social security benefits are going to look like for each of them. And then here's their total social security right here. So if we go back to a summary of this, you can see income flows here. This is a combination of both of their salaries. And then as soon as age 70 hits, their income goes down because salaries go away and social security is in. And then even at age 75, we then start to project out their required minimum distributions. More on that later. What we wanna do now though, is compare how does this income coming in compare to the expenses going out? And not so much in their working years. They already know that the income coming in is covering all their needs. We wanna look at this from year one of retirement and beyond. So age 70 is when they retire. Here's their income coming in from social security. Let's compare that to their expenses. So living expenses of 104,825, what this is, is the $6,500 per month in today's dollars, annualize that number, and then adjust that for inflation over the next 10 years. They're 60 today, we're projecting out retirement expenses 10 years from today at age 70. That is what this number is right here. It's the inflation adjusted equivalent of $6,500 per month in today's dollars. Now that's not all. 6,500 per month allows them to live comfortably, but that's not all. In addition to that, they have a mortgage right now and we're gonna have the conversation, do they pay it off early or not? But as it stands, they're just making that minimum payment. What that means is they'll still have a mortgage payment for the first few years of retirement. That mortgage payment goes away in the year that they're turning 74. What doesn't go away is the property taxes and insurance. So we're projecting out full mortgage payment for the first four and a half years or so of retirement and then just property taxes and insurance each year going forward. In addition to housing, we also need to project out medical expenses. Here's the total cost of their insurance. Here's the Part B and Part D premiums, and then we're planning for other out-of-pocket expenses as well. So you can see what those expenses look like. And then finally, that's just their core expenses. So basic expenses to live comfortably, plus housing, plus insurance. In addition to that, if you recall, they want to be able to travel. They need to be able to maintain their home. So these are the additional goals that we're planning for of having 20,000 per year to take the trips that they wanna take and an extra $15,000 per year to maintain the home that they really love even though it's a very old home. So combine those and then adjust those for inflation. That's what we're looking at here. And then every so often a new car purchase as well. So when we look at all of these things here, we have their expenses plus their goals plus a projected tax payment. What that gives us is this number right here. And this number right here says, Tommy, Monica, here's the amount of income you need coming in. So you can pay taxes, pay to repair your property, pay for the travel, pay for housing, pay for insurance, and then have $6,500 per month left over in today's dollars. So what do we do? Well, we want to say if that's how much it's going to cost to live, we compare that to the income coming in from Social Security and we get the net flows or the difference. That net flows tells us what needs to come from Tommy in Monica's portfolio value. So the next step from here is if this is how much needs to come from their portfolio, we wanna know how much might be in their portfolio at that time. Today, they have about $2.2 million in their portfolio. We are projecting a growth rate of about 6.5% per year starting today throughout retirement. That is in no way a guarantee they will get it. It's simply a growth rate that we're using to project both in their current working years and their retirement years because the makeup of their portfolio is a fairly moderate portfolio at this point. But when we look at their portfolio balance, plus savings, plus employer match, plus average market returns, assuming that 6.5% growth rate, what we see is they're projected to have a portfolio balance of about $5 million at age 70. So if we go back here to their cash flows, 
and say $134,000 is what they need from their portfolio, and they have $5 million in their portfolio, what that will give us is a projected withdrawal rate that first year of retirement. So let's take a look at that. This page here actually quantifies that withdrawal rate. At age 70, 2.6%, 2.7%, 3.2% the following year. So those first few years of retirement, they're in the 25 to 3% range with their withdrawal rate. Then that starts to drop. That's dropping not because they're cutting back on their lifestyle, but because their mortgage is paid off at this point. It's halfway paid off in this year, which is why the withdrawal rate drops, and it's fully paid off in this year. So once their mortgage is paid off, it only takes about 2% of their portfolio value for them to maintain their desired living expenses and lifestyle. Now you see this starts to increase, and that's not because all of a sudden their lifestyle and their spending increases, it's because required distributions kick in from their 403B and 401k and IRA, and they're forced to start taking money out. However, when we look at this, all of these withdrawal rates are lower than historically speaking what a good portfolio could sustain over the course of a 30 plus year retirement. What does that mean? It means that if we look at everything, if we look at the projection of their portfolio over time, it's not unreasonable to think that even once they retire, and like we said, they may have about $5 million or so in their portfolio, their portfolio will continue growing over time to the extent that they might pass away with 12 plus million dollars in their portfolio in this projection, simply because they spent far less from their portfolio than their portfolio would have been able to generate during their working years. By the way, I know a lot of you reach out after seeing these videos and ask, is this software available for purchase? And it actually is. So there's a link to Retirement Planning Academy in the notes here, which comes with access to this exact software. So take a look at that if you're interested. But as we're looking at this, this is not a successful outcome in my mind. Yes, there's a lot of money left at the end of the day. Yes, there's a very high probability of success when you look at this, 100% probability of success, but it's not a successful outcome. And it's not a successful outcome to me because I know that Tommy and Monica do not want to work until age 70. In their minds, that's what they're telling themselves, but that's because they haven't really put a plan in place and that's because they have no idea what's actually possible. Oftentimes it's not until you see the future projections that you can actually start feeling confident in saying a retirement date that you'd be more comfortable with. So what we started doing was we said, let's, let's just imagine for a second, all else is equal, what might this look like? If you cut your working years in half, Instead of being 60 today and working until 70, what if you worked until age 65? What would that look like? Well, we showed them that if they did that, what the impact would be is yes, it does mean there's fewer dollars in their portfolio by age 95, but they're still on track to have a comfortable retirement. And when we look at the probability of success, a still relatively high probability that they're gonna have success during their retirement years doing this. So still very possible. Another option, as I said, if you're still dead set at working until 70, let's adjust this back here and go back to what we initially started with, which is the assumption that they would bo both work until age 70. Don't work until 70 and then not spend like you want to spend. If you are going to work until 70, maybe you can bump your lifestyle up quite significantly. What if instead of 6,500 per month, what if you increase that by almost 50%? Make that $9,500 per month. And I'm just choosing somewhat arbitrary numbers to show them what's possible. Even if you increased your spending by $3,000 per month, and think for a second, what could you do with $3,000 per month? Whether that's trips, whether that's supporting charities you care about, whether that's just enhanced lifestyle and living, you could do that, Tommy and Monica. Yes, there's fewer dollars at the end of the day, like we saw before, but still a very high probability of success and still a very high likelihood that you are going to meet all of your goals throughout retirement. So that's another option. And then finally, the third option that I showed them, not that there's only three, but sometimes having three good core options is a helpful place to start. As I said, what if you do really enjoy work, but it's the fact that you feel like you have to save all of your income and can't enjoy things outside of work that's causing you to feel like you need to work until age 70? What if you did work till 70, but stopped the saving, and instead of saving, you use that to spend money on great trips today? You used all of your PTO, you used all of the excess income, to really live life today without feeling like that had to wait until age 70 or at least until you retire. What does that look like? Well, Tommy, what if you stop putting 15% into your 403B? That's 12 grand a year that's freed up pre-tax. Monica, what if you stopped saving to your 401k? That's 30,000 plus per year that's freed up pre-tax. What does that do? And at first they were a little shocked. Why on earth would we stop saving? These are some of our peak earning years. We're really building our portfolio balance. Why would we stop that? Well, I showed them 
even if they did stop that for an entire decade, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars less money that's going into their portfolio. Yes, it impacts their plan, but their probability of success is still extremely high. And what I explained to them is they've done the heavy lifting. They've maxed 401ks. They've put money in away. They've saved a great portfolio today. They've got $2.2 million today. So let that portfolio continue to do the work in terms of your long-term projections of continuing to grow so that when you do retire, that can create your income, but allow your current salaries today to fund current lifestyle today. Not that it has to be an all or nothing proposition. We could also look at scaling back on savings, but in doing this, Tommy and Monica, can you start taking those trips today? Can you start living today? Can you feel fully comfortable today? And maybe that allows you to keep working longer because you enjoy aspects of the job. You just don't want to feel like that work and all the salary you're earning from it is fully putting you in a position to retire instead of helping you with your current lifestyle today. So as we explored this, Tommy and Monica for the first time really started thinking, there's a lot more that's possible than we ever realized before. And more than that, it's not all about how do we maximize retirement savings today so that we can maximize enjoyment in the future. It's about aligning their portfolio and their plan to allow for what they want to do today while still preparing for what they want to do in the future. Now, when we went through this with Tommy and Monica, this was just the beginning. The beginning is just the time to dream, to see what's possible, to see what high level things you should begin doing to move in the direction of what your goals are. But that's not where the planning stopped. After that, we monitored their investments to say you're probably a bit too conservative today in your portfolio given the time horizon and the risk tolerance that you have going forward. We looked at their tax strategy to say there are ways to save tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars on taxes given the makeup of your portfolio and your income thresholds both today and in the future. We reviewed their insurances, we reviewed their estate plan, really we optimized everything to make sure that as Tommy and Monica left the office that day, they were gonna be in a position to fully focus on what a meaningful, productive life looked like for them, knowing their finances were organized in such a way to support all of that. Now you might be seeing this, and you might have more money or less money than Tommy and Monica in your portfolio, but you might now be thinking, huh, I wonder if I can also retire, and maybe I'm in a better position than I thought I might be. Well, take a look at this video right here, because there's a lot of people that certainly are in a better position than they thought, and oftentimes continuing to work is actually a bigger risk for them than discontinuing. So in the video I have linked above, I talk about five reasons it might be time for you to retire now. Once again, I'm James Knoll, founder of Root Financial. And if you're interested in seeing how we help our clients at Root Financial get the most out of life with their money, be sure to visit us at www.rootfinancialpartners.com.